What is up everybody, how is it going? Welcome back to World of Tanks. Today I am finally going to continue my road to the STRV 103B series and I am going to finish this grind. I am going to get yet another tier 10 into my garage. I think I started uh, that grind before the Christmas. Well, I started this grind uh, pretty much when the Swedish TDs were introduced into the world of tanks and it has been a long time since my previous episode about Uda's 03. But I am at tier 9 at the moment. I am at SDRV 103 So I need roughly 140 46,000 experience more to get SDRV 103B. And I have this uh, Christmas discount still active. Uh, discount 30%. I am able to get SDRV 103B with uh, 4.27 million credits, which is just perfect. Uh, this is that uh, special thing uh, during, to, or this was that special thing during to Christmas where we had to decorate Christmas tree. And as uh, soon as you were able to get every single uh, decoration, to level 5, you got this discount as well, on the top of everything else, on the top of uh, some other bonuses like uh, consumables and uh, reserves and so on so on. But it feels really good to get yet another tier 10 into my garage with uh, 4.27 million credits. And in today's episode I am going to show you a couple of battles with SDRV 103 that I had in this span of 3 hours. And I really do not know which battles I am going to show you guys, because for some odd reason, today was my day to play with SDRV 103 I was doing super good in this tank. Uh, look over here, I played a couple of battles with uh, tier 9 German medium tank E50 as well, but uh, most of those battles are played with SDRV. Uh, so I ended up my session, uh, my 16 battle session at uh, 5000 WN8 and I was getting so many crazy scores in a row. I was actually able to get uh, 2 top guns in a row as well with this beast. So just a couple of battles over here. But I really do not know what was going on with me and the SDRV today. We were simply working together. Uh, so before we are going to jump into some gameplay action, a couple of words about this tank as well. What is good about this tank and what is bad about this tank? Well I believe the worst thing about this tank is of course uh, the siege mode. Because it is going to limit your playstyle, your, your moves, your positioning a lot. You always have to think about how you can fall back, how you can reposition and so on. Uh, but uh, sniping from the distance usually is not my kind of style. Maybe at the start of the battle with this tank or, or it actually depends on the map. It depends on the map a lot how I am going to play my SDRV. I like to play it a little bit more aggressively like sniping, sitting in the back, um, sitting in the red line, sniping for 10 minutes. This is not my cup of tea. Uh, this tank is really fast, so if you are pushing in, if you can see that enemy is too shot for you, enemy is at around, let's say, 700 HP or maybe, maybe 750 or something like that, you can easily rush in. You can easily rush in when you see the enemy, you can auto-lock automatically and you can press X at the same time. So after you are done going into the siege mode, you can open fire right away. And your DPM is amazing. You can kill tanks just so bloody fast, even with auto aiming because you have 308 millimeters of penetration with standard APCR round. That, yes, it's going to lose some penetration over the distance. So at 50 meters it has 308, at 200 meters it has 306 millimeters of penetration and at 500 meters you have 298 millimeters of penetration. So you can see that you are going to lose some penetration but not that much as with some of the other vehicles. So do not worry about that. You, you do not have to worry about that too much. So let's say you, you are cruising in, you can see an tank, auto aim, press X and after 2 seconds you are ready to fire. So it is going to take you 2 seconds plus your reload time to deal around 800 damage to the enemy vehicles. Because your average damage per shot is a 390 penetration as I said 308. And of course minus 11 degrees of gun depression thanks to your siege mode, 11 degrees of gun elevation, you have no aim them whatsoever while you are in the siege mode and uh, you have the most accurate gun in the game while you are in the siege mode so just I don't know I like to play it a little bit more aggressively 
uh, than most of the players do. And with my crew members, with my equipment, I can be in quite aggressive positions, in quite aggressive bushes. I can do some early spotting at the start of the battle, without firing, of course. Uh, my equipment loadout is the medium caliber tank on rammer, uh, camonet and uh, binoculars to get uh, that epic, epic view range and uh, to spot, to out spot the scouts, for example. I have brothers in arms, six cents and uh, recon skill loading up. I have a situational awareness already active on my radio operator, so my view range is 508 meters. Yes, I know your maximum view range is 450, but with my 508, I am able to uh, devalue or how to say, yeah, devalue enemy light tanks or, or DD's uh, camo value a little bit. Uh, so this is amazing. My concealment uh, while I'm stationary is 56.91%. And yes, I am playing this tank with a food as well because I'm not using ventilation, so I would like to keep my DPM a little bit higher. And usually, if you get spotted, uh, if artillery hits you, you are effed up anyway. And well, there is nothing much more to say about that but uh, there is actually some variety how you can play this tank you do not have to camp all the time so hopefully in today's episode i am going to be able to show you a couple of interesting battles as well so let's jump right into the action and let's see that amazing dpm in action so my first battle today was played on Erlenberg, good old Derpenberg. And as you can see from the matchmaking, I believe this is the toughest tier 9 matchmaking you are able to get. Because we have 5 tier 10s and all the rest of the guys are from tier 9. And of course uh, we have one artillery as well. And you know that Swedish TDs and Arty, they are not the best friends. Our Moisen says rip left flank and I can actually understand why he said it because look on the minimap guys we have five tanks over here we have Badger 25T who is doing really good work at the moment well done Badger 25T he was able to put a couple of shots into the T-54 and into some other tanks as well uh, but we have SDI we have E100 we have 113 but look how many tanks enemy team is going to send over here my first shot into the WZ-120 did not penetrate and that's second shot did not even hit so i do not know what is going on at the moment but my first shot in uh, third shot into the strv is a penetration let's try it again versus type 4 heavy I should have good enough penetration versus the Type 4 Heavy. Even though this guy is around 410 meters away from me, I should have around 300 millimeters of penetration with my standard APCR round after counting in that penetration loss over the distance. Uh, now, this battle, or why I decided to show you this battle, it is prime example of what happens to the enemy team if they ignore. SDRV 130. You can see that enemy team is quite aggressive, that 121 is quite aggressive. Who is on fire at the moment? Badger 25T was really aggressive getting over here. And boom, my first blind kill. First kill in the bag. And I think that 121 forgot about me. Otherwise, why the hell do you stay over there? That guy is dead. SDRV 130. Enemy SDRV. I was going for the commander hatch, but seems like I did hit the hull and now I got spotted as well. I have to be careful about the RT, but second shot goes into the commander hatch and kills enemy SDRV. So, my kill number 3 already. I did receive one shot from RT. That shot yet another miss. I'm getting some pretty unlucky misses at the moment into the T10. Panzer Gumpfagen 7, enemy team still has so many bloody tanks over here. WZ 120, Panzer Gumpfagen 7, D 54 one is trying to get up the hill. I was trying to deal tracking damage or damage and tracking with the same shot, but did not happen. Second one goes in, puts him on fire, and tracks him once again. And seems like D 54 one was not carrying fire extinguisher. Enemy WZ 120, who can easily. Uh, overmatch my armor is using H ammunition according to the splash damage. So H ammunition, he missed that shot and he made one huge mistake staying up over here. My 1 to 1 decided to help me out, push one shot into the 120 and down he goes. Badger 25T is trying to get away but 300 or sorry 435 meter sniping shot takes that guy down as well. 
But we are not done yet, because next up we have full HP Bunter Kampfwagen 7 over here. One shot into the tracks, I was able to deal some damage as well with that shot. Second shot into the tracks as well, let's farm some assistance. And seems like this guy repaired his tracks second time in a row. So I am I'm pretty sure that he's carrying two repair kits. So I'm simply going to keep this guy tracked without any without taking any risks to get some damage to my assistance. And I was able to do that. I was able to farm some damage to my assistance. And that is it. This is going to be my battle. Do you remember guys how many enemy tanks did we have over here? And we lost only SDI at the end of this fight over here. Only SDI went down. Badget is still alive, 113 is still alive, E100 is still alive, and I am still alive. With 6 kills. I was actually quite surprised how many kills I was able to pick up. I didn't see that I had 6 kills before the result screen. So let's see what I was able to get for this battle. It was my ace tanker battle, or actually it was one of my ace tanker battles in that session. So crazy things happened, but ace tanker, arsonist, ribbon, top gun. And as I said, I was quite surprised over the amount of experience I got for this kind of damage with this tank. So uh, second by damage done overall, our budget 25T, really good work, really nicely played battle as well by you. So 4.6K damage done, six kills, and close to 1500 raw experience 23 shots fired 20 hits and only 12 penetrations with 308 millimeters of penetration only 12 penetrations this is crazy and close to 3000 to my assistance so i can say 7.5 combined damage 7.5 thousand combined damage but um, this doesn't matter. Overall, this battle was really exciting, really action-packed and awesome to play and hopefully awesome for you to watch as well. But now let's jump into yet another one and let's see what happened over there. Next up, once again, one really interesting battle, in my opinion at least, uh, on highway and this time I am on the top of the food chain, as you can see. We have two artilleries, we have five tier 9s and all the rest of the guys are from tier 8s. And uh, having a lot of tier 8s in this kind of matchmaking means we have quite a nice amount of um, HP on the battlefield. So let's see. Now highway map, uh, usually for STRVs, uh, well this is super boring map because you pretty much have to Take one position, you have to hope that your team sucks and you have to hope that enemy team is going to push in and you can uh, deal your damage that way. But this is not the case in this battle because once again I am going to be pretty aggressive, quite aggressive as you are going to see soon. Uh, but first position as always is going to be on that road behind some of those bushes. I was able to take down Scorpion G thanks to our awesome scout in the Badget 12T. Next target, uh, Chrysler KGF, first shot, penetration, now I am aiming for the tracks, I'm trying to track that guy, but someone else was able to do that, and now this guy is tracked once again, I actually should have gone for the kill, because 350 HP left, that was my kill range, so I lost some damage over there, but I was able to pick up the kill anyway. So, second kill in the bag, and I can see that enemy team is moving in with a pretty heavy forces into the city. Let's see. They have Defender over there, D30 is also moving in, Waffentrager of Panzer 4, but Badget 20 or Badget 12 T is trying to spot that guy. But Uda 03, Pixel Hunt at the back of the tank and goes in 412 damage done that was really lucky shot i have to admit that was really lucky shot one blind shot as well the worst that would have zero free but most likely uh, that guy is already backing up in the travel mode we have two really awesome scouts uh, doing some work, Badget 12T and AMX 1390. They are going to hunt down enemy artilleries and they actually spotted Lorraine 40T. But I can see from the minimap that enemy Oho and Defender, they are kinda trapped in. They cannot go forward and the only way where they can go is they can back up. But I am ready, I am waiting for those guys. Defender has been spotted through the objects, I believe I did hit that bloody house, but I am ready to go. So waiting for Defender to back up and hello, quick shot into the tracks, 380 damage done. That Defender 
doesn't have a repair kit guys and this is just farming at its best sweet we can see that enemy oho is trying to ram the defender but that defender has nothing to do this game for those guys is over boom defender goes down and oho oho should go down as well i believe so yeah let's move let's move in let's see oh god damn it that wolfen dragon was still over there i I was actually genuinely thinking that our scouts, uh, maybe they peeked over the corner to see if the Dwarven Dragger is still over there or not, but uh, seems like they didn't, and the uh, Dwarven Dragger was able to hide in his hole. Lorraine Artillery trying to run away, 343 damage done into that Lorraine, who is aiming towards our Wolfentrager Panzer IV, blow up style points, and just before going down, I think he was able to put one more into the Waffentrager. I wasn't able to reload fast enough to take out that Skoda 50, but it doesn't matter. Tiger moving in together with D30 and Super Bershing. Full HP Tiger and full HP D30. Hello. Through the objects. I actually didn't see the outline myself as well. This was not a replay bug, so kind of a risky shot. Boom, second shot goes in as well. Our A75 was pretty damn ballsy, moving in like that. There were Stephardy and Jagdtiger and Super Bershing and whatnot. Is Jagdtiger able to get away from me? And yes, he was able to get away from me. So I have to back up quick. Quick uh, travel mode and let's back up because it is getting a little bit too scary for me. D30 is a potential one shot. Well, it's easy one shot. All I have to do is I have to penetrate, but I decided to reposition. I decided to pick a little bit different angle to deal with uh, all those tanks over here. The Arc Tiger almost at full HP. Still almost at full HP. But I am, I believe I am potential one shot to that uh, enemy D30. So I have to look out for that. Dark Tiger is moving in. He can see our 112. Come on. He missed quickly siege mode and quick shot. 400 damage done. 400 damage done. Now I'm thinking maybe the T30, maybe that Super Bershing are coming in from that position. Like, we have no vision. Uh, I don't know why I can show it to you. But we have no vision over here. Look on the minimap. We have no vision over there. So maybe Super Bershing and T30 are going to be in this corner. So this is why I'm backing up. This is why I'm repositioning where I'm going at the moment. This should give me a little bit better angle for that Yacht Tiger as well, maybe. Let's see how greedy that enemy Octagor is. Is he going for 112 or not? Oh, I can see Octagor, I can see Super Pershing and T30. Every single tank has been spotted. Quick shot into the lower plate and the Octagor did hit that bloody post in front of him instead of me. So high roll needed and I was able to get one nasty nasty high roll for that Octagor skill. Super Pershing spotted. Quick turn and boom, 433 damage done on the top of everything else. And the Super Pershing goes down as well. I wasn't able to pick up yet another top gun. That this battle would have been my third top gun in a row in this tank, actually. But uh, if I remember correctly, I was able to hit one blind shot. So over 6k damage done. But let's take a look at the result screen as well. Now this battle was my first class battle because I did not spot a lot of my own targets and I have seen some crazy like 11,000 damage first class battles as well uh, from the players who are not spotting anything at all so you can deal even 11,000 damage and you can get first class. I do not remember the battle was it with STRV 103 or 103B but I to remember that there was one crazy crazy first class uh, so demolition expert for blowing up 
that artillery nice 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 and high caliber as well so yes one of my blind shots was a hit uh, over six thousand damage done top by damage done by far as we can see five kills 1313 experience and this time once again 23 shots fired 20 hits and 18 penetrations illuminati confirmed because as we remember in my previous battle i did fire 23 shots as well and i did hit 20 of them so kind of interesting statistics but uh, not too bad not too bad off the battle after all and uh, ladies and gents i believe this is going to be my episode for you today about SDRV 130 tier 9 Swedish TD. Only one more tank to go. I need roughly 150,000 experience more with this tank so I can buy SDRV 103B with 4.27 million credits, which is the best thing I can do with my credits at the moment. And my final opinion about this tank do I recommend this tank to you? I do not know guys, I actually do not know or I actually cannot recommend this tank to you because it is just so different. Every single siege mode tank is just so different in this game. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but you have to try it out yourself. I cannot say that it is the best thing in the world. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I hate it. When I like it, I play with uh, those tanks. When I hate it, I do not play with those tanks. I, pr uh, I play with uh, regular tanks. But uh, it is just, you have to try it out. There is no other way. There is no other way to describe it because uh, playstyle is just so different. DPM is amazing, accuracy is amazing, the best accuracy, aiming time, there is no aiming time, pretty much. So you have to try it out yourself. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, I thank you so much for tuning in, and I catch you in my next one. Take care and bye.